Hello everyone and welcome back to this Football Manager 2017 experiment where we see what would happen if you swapped the top league with the bottom league in English football. So as you can see, where we left off last time, Newcastle had just replaced Oxford City as the champions of England, finishing seven points above Norwich. More teams were starting to get relegated. Uh, if we have a look at the championship, this was two years in and you can see at the league table that all of the Premier League teams that got relegated are now also immediately relegated from the Championship but Wolves, Brentford and Derby are all going to have a chance at going for European football and the title next season. Now if we have a look at the Vanarama National League um, you'll see that Manchester City and Chelsea both managed to go up, Chelsea needing the playoffs to do it, Manchester City winning the league overall if I can get to the screen there we go they finished one point clear and if we drop down another league to the north this was the interesting thing that happened in the last episode Stoke and Sunderland getting repositioned into the Vanarama National League North and both getting to get promoted despite um, the everybody else being in the National Honor Vanarama National League South where only Arsenal and Spurs went up so Liverpool and United are still in the lowest tier of English football and if we have a quick click on them and you'll see they've still got a decent reputation um, and their finances are still secure because they're still getting their sponsorship money and everything else. But their value has fallen below their level of debt, which could have serious long term implications as their reputation continues to fall. Uh, their finances not too bad at the moment, but you can expect them to get worse very quickly the longer they stay down in that league so what we're going to do now is go forward one more year see where everybody is and then we'll hopefully have time to go forward another year after that well here we are one year in the future and as you can see Newcastle retain the Premier League title right at the top of the league Still a rich club now, managed by somebody called Tommy Witterington. I have no idea who that is. Um, but they are the current champions of England, winning it too much, two more times. Um, and if we have a look at their club details, you'll see their reputation doing pretty well. Their finances are pretty nice as well. Um, their reputation not quite caught up to the level of existing Premier League champions, but a couple more trophies like that and they will get there. Now, the interesting thing here is that Eastbourne Borough finished fourth last year and they've managed to finish fourth again. They are holding their own against the big clubs in English football, managing to keep this position still. And if we have a look at their general information, you can see the club now valued at £251 million. If we look at their transfer history for this season, spending £25 million, pulling in players like Gary Cahill, from Chelsea doing brilliantly really as a club just keeps spending the money to push themselves up the league Derby only finishing fifth Barnsley and Brentford down in eighth and ninth with three former non-league teams ahead of them um, that's quite surprising Oxford City the original champions now just fighting relegation not doing too well so if we drop down another league Actually, no, we can have a look at the transfers first. Let's go up and take a look at the transfer history in the league. Um, and you'll see that the major transfers, uh, Deli Alley going to Newcastle from Spurs is a huge one. Marcus Rashford um, also going to Newcastle. So two of the biggest prospects in English football already ending up at Newcastle. They also signed up Son Hyung Min and Adam Lallana. So they will soon be able to push on and go for a real challenge against uh, European competitions. But if we drop down now to the championship and just see how the teams have got on here, who's going to be coming up, um, we can see that all of the non-league teams got relegated again. St. Albans, Bath and Gospel all going down. Sheffield Wednesday, Aston Villa and Reading are going to have a shot at the Premier League next year. And in League One... If we look at the league table, um, not all of the non-league teams went down. So Poole managed to stay up, the only non-league team to avoid relegation. That will do them the world of good, finishing two points ahead of Carlisle. Um, but this is where next year, I think, the teams will start to mix. The non-league teams will fall below some of the upcoming Premier League teams. So if we go down to League 2, we will see... That in the league table, Manchester City and Chelsea both finishing at the top. Manchester City as champions, Chelsea also going up. 
as the runners up. So they will overtake some of the non-league teams that are now dropping further down the league table. Now, if we have a look at their transfer history, we'll see that Kurt Zuma leaving, oh, a lot of players leaving here. Their reputation has fallen too far and a lot of these players are going out the door. Kurt Zuma to Leverkusen. Mangala and Diego Costa going to Arsenal is an interesting one. Fabian Delft's gone. Uh, Van Ginkel, David Luiz, Begovic, Pedro, Traore, Koscielny all leaving. Uh, Koscielny going to Chelsea, though, with at least from Arsenal but Izzy Brown going all of the big transfers from the big clubs they are starting to be gutted and they're not bringing in the players to replace them which isn't great news for them if we have a look at the information on Manchester City they've still got decent reputation they've still got Pep Guardiola in charge they're managing to hang on to things Antonio Conte is still in charge of Chelsea as well as they secure a third promotion in a row now let's drop down to the Vanarama National League and as you can see Spurs and Arsenal are the only two teams to go up. They are chasing Chelsea and Manchester City up the league table. Sunderland and Stoke just missing out. Stoke lost in the playoff to Arsenal. Um, but the two big teams are getting out of that league, as you would expect. Um, if we look at the transfer history for this window, Anthony Martial moving to Arsenal from Manchester United. That's a big one. Uh, also raided Sadio Mane from Liverpool as well. Arsenal trying to recruit... The, from the teams in the bottom league still and try and fix their position. Now let's drop down to the National League North. Remember, we didn't put any teams in this competition. The game keeps repositioning them based on where they are in the country, I think. And Liverpool and Manchester United were both dropped into this league. But what is hilarious is that Manchester United didn't win in the playoffs. They were beaten by Wrexham in the playoffs. Manchester United absolutely falling apart right now. Um, what on earth has happened to them there? Their manager now, Laurent Blanc, Jose Mourinho has left. If we have a look at their history of managers, then Jose Mourinho was sacked quite some time ago, actually, which we didn't notice. Um, but Ander Herrera now the captain, vice-captain Chris Smalling. But Paul Pogba is still at the club, and yet they can't get out of the Vanuama National League North. So Manchester United still in the bottom tier of English football. Liverpool at least managing to get out. Now in the Vanuama National League South, if we have a look at the league table, all of the big teams now out of this original league that we put them in. Man uh, West Ham have managed to get out of it as champions. Everton finishing second, Bournemouth third and Southampton also going up finishing in fourth position. Eventually all of these clubs probably will drop out. They're all finishing in a league of their own above everybody else but there's only, well there were 33 points between 11th and 12th in the league. Definitely a top 10 and a bottom 10 there. But the interesting club to just have a quick, quick little look at is Middlesbrough. If we can find them, where is Middlesbrough? There they are. They are still in the regional Premier Divisions. They just got relegated from the Vanarama National League South and they've not come back up yet, which is insane. If we have a look at their general information, they now have an estimated value of 31 million and a loan debt of 31 million as well. Their transfer history can't make for good reading. It's just players leaving the club. 14 million pounds raised, 29 and a half million pounds raised. I don't know if they're going to come back. You would have thought they'd immediately bounce back, but apparently they're still down in the Evo Stick Leagues, which means that they're not coming back at any time soon. Maybe they'll come back next season, but let's jump forward another year in time and see how people are doing. Well, as you can see, for the third year in a row, Newcastle champions of England. Interestingly, Chelmsford finished second. Eastbourne Borough, their fourth place team, slipping to fifth this year. Just three points off Sheffield Wednesday. But there's only three Champions League places available because English football has dropped to the fourth league in the world now. Their coefficients really starting to take a beating. But Newcastle have won it yet again. And Oxford, the original Premier League champions, have now been relegated. But Barnsley and Brentford both towards the bottom half of the table. This is going to start to look a bit more like the championship in a couple more years time. Um, if we have a look at the transfer history at the league, you can see Marlos Moreno has moved from Man City to Western Supermare. Granite Xhaka from Arsenal to Whitehawk and Ramiro Funes Mori moving to Quan Zhan in China. Patrick Roberts going to Aston Villa. So still, uh, the non-league teams are able to take some of the good players from the lower league sides, which is um, helpful for them at least. It will help maintain their possession in the league. Now, if we drop down to the championship, we will see that 
the if we can get to the stages screen and then the league table. We'll see Brighton, Huddersfield and Birmingham, the three teams to go up. Now, all of the other non-league teams have now got relegated, I think, all three of them going down. So the teams are not able to be at a level where they're staying in the championship just yet. Hampton and Richmond only went down by seven points, though, so maybe next season that gap will break. If we look at League One and the league table, we can see that Manchester City and Chelsea continue their ascent back to the top of English football breaking into the championship this year still finishing well ahead of the rest of the field it was a two horse race the entire time Rotherham also managing to go up now of the non-league teams say Albans and I think Bath have finished the highest all of the other four or three two of the other four actually are all going down um, but otherwise these two teams, Bath and St Albans, both managing to hang on to their position in League One. Now, if we look at the transfers for City and Chelsea, again, it's mostly players on an exodus. Thibaut Courtois, though, moving to Man City from Chelsea. But Willian is now gone, Moreno now gone, and they are not bringing in the players to replace them either. And that was what will really start to slow them down when they hit the Premier League. Now, let's have a look at League Two. Um, if we look at the stages and the league table, you can see Spurs and Arsenal did win the league, completely expected really. Um, the other teams to go down were Oldham and Grimsby, so the likes of Truro have managed to stay in the Football League. None of the non-league teams getting relegated from the Football League just yet. Um, Hungerford also managing to hang on to their position. That might change soon, but for right now, they are still staying in the Football League. Spurs and Arsenal, though, will be in Skybet League One next season. From the Banarama National League, you can see West Ham won the league. Liverpool finishing second, Southampton third, and Stoke went up through the playoffs. Sunderland also in there as well. Um, all finishing in a bit of the league of their own at the top there, all nearly getting 100 points as well. So they're not really struggling at the moment. And West Ham and Stoke will be a football league team next season. In the Vanarama National League North, Manchester United are finally out of the bottom tier of English football after six years of waiting. They won 41 and drew one. Hull also getting promoted. The two sides given a free pass by being pushed into the Van Armour National League North. Um, Manchester United must surely be struggling now. They've been in this bottom tier for so long. They're apparently they've still got a worldwide reputation, but their value has dropped to £555 million. That might start to fix itself soon. And in the Vanarama National League South, if we take another quick look at this, we can see Bournemouth are the team to go up with West Brom. Now, everybody else still in a league of their own, finishing above everybody else. I've still not spotted Middlesbrough in the game again. So they are still stuck wherever they are in the wilderness, the non-existent black hole of this game. But Swansea finishing eighth, the lowest team in the Football League that were in the Premier League before. Now, let's have a look at the um, Champions League and see how the big teams have done in this season now if we have a look at last season and jump to the final and see how far the english teams got so atletico madrid won at the final no english teams in the semis but newcastle did make the quarter final so newcastle have made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the champions league as champions of england were there any other english teams in there uh, norwich also made it to the last 16 which is good for them if we have a look at the group stage we will see that Newcastle in there, um, Norwich finished second in their group as well, but nobody else in the group stage because they've lost that position. So if we have a look at the playoff position where the other English team should be, Wolves did get knocked out by Dinamo Kiev. Now the year before that, I think there should have been a few more players, a few more English teams in there. So Eastbourne Borough were just narrowly beaten by Benfica. Imagine the scenes if they'd got through then. Um, in the group stage, the English teams, Barnsley missing out by two points, but the fact they managed to win a game is impressive. Norwich also missing out from getting out of the group stage, and Newcastle f did finish second, so they got out of the group stage. In the first knockout round, Newcastle then were beaten 5-1 by Leon, absolutely taken apart. 
So not quite made success yet, the English teams in Europe. The quarterfinals, the best they've done in the Champions League. Um, now, if we have a look at the Europa League, which we could do by clicking this down button, and if we drop back one season, in the final, Manchester City won the Europa League. They will be back in the Champions League next season. They've managed to do the job beating Schalke in the final. Um, in the semis, you had just Man City in the quarterfinals, City were in there alone still, the last 16, uh, just City. Derby were beaten by Fiorentina in the last 16 there. First knockout round, any other English teams, Derby taken out, um, Eastbourne Borough taken out by Valencia and Wolves taken out by Inter Milan. So none of them doing particularly well in that stage, but Manchester City managing to win it was incredibly impressive. Now Liverpool were also in it the year before. Eastbourne Borough managed to beat Salzburg to get through to the next round. Uh, Norwich and Barnsley both going out though. If we have a look at the second knockout round, then Eastbourne Borough was finally stopped by Copenhagen, but Liverpool carried on their march. In the quarterfinals, Liverpool were beaten by Atletico Madrid on away goals, so they didn't manage to make it through. Now, in the FA Cup, if we can find it, the current holders are Derby. They beat um, Newcastle in the final. Now, the current situation here is that it was won by Chelsea and Liverpool, but those teams have stopped winning the FA Cup now. It was Newcastle and Derby that have won the last two. Um, if we drop, hopefully, into the EFL Cup, you'll see the reason Manchester City were in the Europa League was because they won it the year before. Aston Villa won it this time against Manchester City again. But it means after winning the Europa League, Manchester City will be back in the Champions League, um, despite only being in the Championship, uh, which I think is the only time in the history of the Champions League that a second tier team will actually be in the competition. I don't think it's possible for that to happen any other way than this. So that is quite an achievement for Manchester City as they recover, getting it playing in the championship next season. The fact they qualified for the Champions League while in League One, actually the third tier of English football, is also incredibly impressive. So it will be something to watch next season, how they got on in the Champions League. But that is going to be it for this episode. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in me keep this going see how far the cl big clubs do get um, and make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the experiments but until next time see ya